Hello, I'm Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist to the Spanish-speaking people. And I'm making a video here today, I believe, on one of the most important subjects of today. The Bible tells us that in the last days, perilous times shall come. I believe we're in those last days. And further, the Bible talks about a time when they're seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible talks about a great falling away and an apostasy that overtakes the world in the last days. Now, you must be, you, you have to be a fool to think that in a time like that, the devil wouldn't be actively working as hard as he could to try to damn people to hell and try to deceive people. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's turning people away from the doctrine of salvation, which is salvation by faith in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. And he's, he's getting them away from the biblical means of salvation with another gospel, with a bloodless gospel. And today we see that bloodless gospel in many, many different forms. People will come along and instead of saying the biblical, trust the blood atonement for salvation, they say things like, well, just beg God for forgiveness. Just ask God to save you. Just invite or ask in Jesus into your heart. Uh, just commit your life to Christ. Just All these things that they're saying, they all have one thing in common. They leave the blood of Jesus Christ out completely. Now, independent fundamental Baptists used to preach against men like that, that would leave out the blood of Jesus Christ. But now, even they leave the blood of Jesus Christ out in their soul winning methods. So we see today a great push against the gospel towards a false gospel, a bloodless gospel, a gospel that gets a person to do something rather than trust what Jesus Christ has already done on the cross of Calvary. And it's sad, and I'm going to devote this video to talking about the, this, this bloodless gospel and talking about the topic of asking for salvation or asking for forgiveness. There's a lot of people out there that say the plan of salvation is just ask God to save you. Is that biblical? Is that in the Bible? Matter of fact, it's not. It's not there. In the Bible, you're saved by faith. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That verse does a good job to tell us what works are. Works are something that you can boast about. Work is to say, I did so and so. And I've talked to a lot of people, and I've gotten their testimony, and many people have told me, well, I just asked God to save me. Well, that sounds like boasting. You see, you're not saved by asking God to save you. You're saved by trusting in what God did for you. It's the faith that saves. It's the believing. Do you realize that the only thing you can do that isn't a work is believe? Did you know that? If you do something, you're lost. If you trust in what Jesus has already done for you, you're saved. So I'm going to devote this video to, to talking about the, the truth of the Bible and the fact that you're not saved by asking God to save you. You're saved by trusting God and what He's already done to save you. Simple. Simple distinction. Some will say you're straining at gnats. That's a straw dummy. You're, you're, you're just you're semantics. No, it's not. There's a great difference between a person trusting in what they did, their asking, and what Jesus did, his atonement on their behalf. A great, huge difference between the two. I've just got seven points here I want to give you on why asking God for forgiveness or asking God to save you is not biblical. You're not saved by asking God. You're saved when you trust what Jesus Christ did for you. I'm just pointing to people to people to Christ crucified, which is what the Apostle Paul did. Nowhere in the Bible do we find the Apostle Paul telling anybody, well, just ask God to save you and you'll go to heaven. It's not there. It's always trust, believe, uh, accept by faith. It's all salvation by trusting what Jesus did, not what we do. So let's look at seven different reasons why it's wrong to ask God to save you. For number one, asking for forgiveness ruins the type of, of Jesus in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament law, God told the Israelites that when they sinned, they had to take a sacrifice to the priest of a lamb. They had to put their hand on that lamb and cut the throat of that lamb and let the blood pour out while the priest grabbed the blood and offered it upon the mercy seat as an atonement for their sins. Now, that lamb in type is Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, When Jesus came, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now, that Old Testament saint was not asking that lamb for forgiveness. That Old Testament saint didn't come forward and go, Well, little lamb, I just I hope you forgive me for this, and then cut his throat. He wasn't doing that. He wasn't saved by his asking. He did what God commanded. He shed the blood, and he trusted the blood. 
And when Jesus Christ came, thank God, he shed his own blood, went up to heaven, and he says, Now trust me, trust my blood shed for you. And if you trust his blood, you're saved. In the Old Testament, it was blood sacrifice. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of the sins. In the Old Testament, they trusted the blood for salvation. In the New Testament, you trust the blood for salvation. Asking for forgiveness, apart from trusting in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, ruins the type of Jesus in the Old Testament. Asking for salvation also does away with Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. When you come to God and you say, Oh God, please save me, Jesus Christ is still, still left going, um, I can't. I can't save you because you're not trusting in my blood atonement. You're not trusting in what I did for you. Many times people come to God and ask for forgiveness without trusting in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness that he offers through his shed blood and faith only in it. it it's almost as if a person comes to God and says, God, please save me. They're asking God to die again on the cross. It's almost as if they're saying, well, what you did on the cross isn't good enough and I don't accept it, so save me anyway, apart from that. That's what asking God to save you does. God made a way of salvation, and it's by trusting what he did. If you're asking God to save you, apart from believing in that, you are not saved. It's that simple. Asking God for salvation is a work done by man rather than by faith alone in what Jesus has already done. You see, you're not saved by what you do, you're saved by what Jesus did. And asking God or begging God for forgiveness shows you don't realize the Bible. You don't understand the gospel. Because you wouldn't beg and ask for salvation if you understood that it's right here. All you have to do is accept it by faith and receive it. And then you're saved. A man wrote a good track years ago called No Forgiveness Without Blood. And in this track he shows uh, Bible verses here and through and shows that salvation isn't by asking Salvation is by believing on what Jesus Christ did for you. Asking is not receiving. Just because you ask for something doesn't mean you get it. Let me give you an example. Can I have $100? All right. I ask you for $100. You know what your first instinct is? No. <laughs> Just because I asked you for $100 doesn't mean I'm going to get it. Why would a person think just because they ask God to save them that they're automatically saved? Isn't that presumptuous? Asking is not receiving. Asking also insults those who want to give. Let's say I have a $100 bill in my hand and I say, it's yours, pick it up. All you have to do is take it. If you came up to me and you said, can I have it? I would be greatly offended. You'd be calling me a liar because I have it in my hand, giving it to you. I say, it's yours, just believe me that I'm not going to pull my hand back, just believe me, and take it. That's salvation. God has done everything necessary to save you. He holds it out. He says, receive it by faith. And yet you say, well, save me, please. God, can you save me? See how it does away with what Jesus has already done? See how it insults the person you're asking? See how it leaves out faith? Asking also uh, leaves a person doubting and wonder if they were ever saved to begin with. And there's many people, I can't tell you how many times I've heard a person's testimony and they say, well, I just asked God to save me. Oh, you did? Well, um, when did you trust what he's done for you? When did you rely upon the shed blood and the blood atonement for salvation? Oh, well, I, I didn't even know about that, they say. Well, until you under, hear the gospel and understand, you can't be converted. There are a plethora of verses in the New Testament that say that. That you have to hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How can you put your faith in something you've never heard? How can you believe something you don't understand? You have to hear the gospel. You have to realize that Jesus died in your place for your sins. And you must come to Him by faith, receiving His free gift of eternal life by faith in His finished work, His shed blood on Calvary. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone's testimony says, Well, I just asked God to save me and I ask Him again every night. Well, if he saved you, why do you ask him again? It's because you've never been saved. Many people ask God to save them, and they expect him to do so just because they ask. But they're not trusting in his blood atonement on, on the cross. They're trusting in what they did. They're trusting in their begging or in their asking. Asking God to save you will damn you to hell. If you're asking apart from salvation, which is through faith alone in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Look, these are just simple things. I'm not trying to preach against salvation. I'm trying to preach how to be saved. 
And in this book, it's a bloody book, and salvation is bloody. It took blood on the cross of Jesus Christ. If you want to be saved, you have to come to Him through that blood, in whom we have forgiveness, in whom we have redemption, through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Jesus chose the method of salvation. He could have just said, well, salvation is just by asking, and He could have stayed in heaven and not come down and died on the cross. He could have said, hey, Michael, Gabriel, come here. I'm starting a new dispensation right now. Anybody who just asked me to save them, I'll save them on the spot. But Jesus didn't do that. He came down from heaven. He lived among us 33 years. He died and he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. And he says, come unto me. He says, if you will trust what I did for you in your place, I will save you. God demands faith. He wants your faith in Him and what He did on the cross, His shed blood. Are you saved or are you lost? I hope you're saved today. I don't know if you are, but I hope you are. Um, give you one final illustration. Let's say you are guilty of, of breaking the law and you go before a judge. And you, let's just take this ask God to save you doctrine and let's just put it down to where we can understand it. You stand before the judge and you know you're guilty and you deserve to pay your penalty for what you've done, for your transgression. And you say, Judge, please forgive me and let me go. Do you think for a minute that judge will let you go? No. That's not the way the law works. You see, the Bible says there must be a just recompense of reward. When you sin, someone has to pay for that sin. And just because you think, well, I'll ask the judge, judge, let me go, he'll let you off. No, he won't. Someone has to pay. Now, let's, let's suppose for a minute that someone comes in and says, judge, I'll take his place. I'll pay for every sin he's ever done. Let me take his place. And let's just say the judge says, all right, you pay for it and let them go free. Don't you think you'd be happy? Don't you think you'd be like, wow, that person, man, look what they did for me. Well, that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. And he's insulted if you say, oh, God, save me. Because you're not saved by asking God to save you. He said, I've already paid for your penalties. Every transgression is paid for. All I want is you to receive me as your Savior. Believe in me. Trust what I've done as sufficient to pay for your sins. And yet people say, God, save me. Oh, God, please save me. Every night they pray, oh, God, please save me. If that's not doubting God to do so, I don't know what is. You're not saved by asking for forgiveness. You're saved by trusting God's atonement. You're not saved by what you say. You trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. I can't make it any clearer. Uh, some people will probably say, well, you're a heretic. This is wrong what you're saying. Well, I've got Bible on it. Where's your Bible? Where's your Bible that says, ask God to save you? If you found a verse, you find a rare verse. Well, what about that verse that says, ask and you shall receive? Have you looked at the context of that lately? That's in the context of a son asking his father for something. A son and father relationship. Hmm, salvation. There's no verse in the Bible that says you're saved by asking. But there's a ton of verses that say you're saved by trusting the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. What he did for you in your place. Are you trusting in what you've done? Are you trusting in what Jesus has done for you? It's that simple. Jesus saves. Trust his shed blood. Romans 3.25. Go to rrb3.com for more information how to be saved. We have a generation of people that are trusting in themselves and what they've done instead of trusting in Jesus Christ and what he's done for them. And that's horrible. And they're omitting and leaving out the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Don't be guilty of that. If you're not saved, get saved. If you are, praise God. Preach the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen.